Hi guys, Irit here with another process video of my art journaling. So I've been doing a lot of art journaling lately and it's been a lot of fun. I'm also working on some new classes that may have something to do with it. Um, so yeah, I find myself uh, in my art journals a lot and the one I'm using here is the large Jane Davenport one which is fantastic I really really hope these can be found easily in Europe soon because I just love it I love the size and the paper is gorgeous for uh, watercolors or similar products so I've been doing quite a lot of um, art journaling with watercolors and gouache in the last few videos, but I just wanted to explore some of my other um, yeah, media. So these are Inktense blocks and you can see they kind of look like chalk pastels, but they are basically ink in this form kind of like a chalk and the nice thing about them is that they are really transparent so you can see you can kind of use them like watercolors they're a little bit more streaky um, and you know you can really see how I every kind of mark that my brush is making you could probably uh, not have that if you use more water and uh, probably a round brush I'm using a flat brush but the fun thing about them, which works really well for art journaling, is that unlike watercolor and gouache, once these are dry, they are permanent. So you can slap whatever you want on top of them and they won't budge. Um, again, because of their transparency, you kind of have to be aware of that. You can't keep layering and layering because uh, they are transparent, so you see the layers beneath them and yeah so I was just playing the, it does have a white ink tense block that is obviously opaque but um, yeah I, I don't use that a lot so you can use these in a few ways you can kind of just use the chalk or break the chalk and use it directly on paper but I find that it's more convenient for me to use them uh, just you know with a brush and kind of leave them in the box it's less messy it's more like using watercolors and um, yeah it works really well you can kind of control the intensity I did also because I'm working on um, this is hot pressed watercolor so it's not very textured but sometimes if you work on textured paper you um, and you use directly the ink tense block the pigment tends to like settle in the uh, grooves of the paper and then you kind of have to scrub your brush if you want to get rid of that texture so um, that's another reason why I prefer to use them uh, like this so keep them in the box and use a brush now I didn't know what was going to happen when I closed my journal on them and I love it before that it was it had all these um, streaks of my brush and I wasn't sure where this was going to go but um, I love how that turned out so it's evening now and everything is dry and as I said it's permanent and I thought about uh, adding this photo I do occasionally use photos in my art journal not a lot but sometimes and um, I was kind of adding the circles in a composition or in, in places where I thought it would work if I added the photo. But the photo actually doesn't make it to the uh, final uh, layout. So I started with a pen that I will link it below. I think it's called a feud pen, something like that, that is actually water resistant. And then I decided I also wanted some uh, smears of ink there. So I actually used the Jane Davenport uh, incredible pen, which has ink in it that is water soluble. So you can see now that I'm adding some water, the black ink in the pen uh, reacts with it and uh, I wanted that kind of, you know, messy look. 
and you can see how nice it is that all the layers of the ink tents uh, ink is staying put it's not uh, reactivating or anything because it's permanent so this is relatively a simple one um, I don't add a lot to it uh, I have these pencils that I got for Christmas last Christmas and they are by Derwent also just like the ink tense blocks and I think they are water soluble graphite I will also link to them they come in very muted colors which is a little bit different for me but I love them they blend beautifully if you add water to them and what I did here is I just added some texture uh, around the circles it's very delicate and I'm also um, playing a bit with their property of being water soluble so I'm dipping the pencil in my water just dipping the pencil straight into my water and that already softens the lead and kind of lets it blend a bit more um, you can see in the close-up shots it's just a really fine detail and obviously you know you can sketch with these uh, but just be mindful that it is uh, water soluble so it depends on the look that you want and like regular uh, pencils are usually not water soluble so you know sometimes I sketch with these and then when I add the watercolor the sketch uh, almost disappears um, which is you know good or bad <laughs> depending on <laughs> what you want it to do uh, but it is really fun you can see the colors are muted and it's it's um, really a, a nice change for me to have kind of a muted color palette at my fingertips so I'm just playing around uh, trying to match a little bit the colors of the pencils to the colors of the ink around the circles so if they're more in the pink zone I'll go for pink if more violet then I'll uh, try to seek a violet uh, pencil and then there are some bluer areas um, and now I just want to kind of paint in these circles uh, just to set them a little bit apart from the rest of the page and I started with gray gouache but I decided to switch to white and that's what I'm going to do soon and this brush is around number 10 by number 10 I think it's a number 10 by Escoda Perla they have different Escoda has uh, several different lines of brushes uh, these ones are called Perla and the bristles are actually white when you get them but you know depending on what you use on them they um, stain but it doesn't uh, damage the performance of the brush and I really love these um, I my favorite brushes at the moment are the Escoda uh, Versatil and the Perla this one that I have and also the Neptune uh, synthetic brushes they're also lovely and affordable so because it's synthetic hair so it's cheaper than real hair and also there's no issues of any uh, animal cruelty or something like that if that is something that concerns you so finishing touches is our finishing touches are uh, just adding some splatters and then I added some journaling again with the incredible pen so that meant that I could go on and drip some water and smear it I hope you enjoyed this video uh, leave me a comment if you have any questions and I wish you a lovely day. Thanks for watching. Bye.